Hi there, Robin here from Expert On today, and we're going to be talking about a subwoofer, the Alto TS215S sub, 15 inch, 1250 watts of power. Easy enough to use, works with everything. If you've got Alto Tops, no problem. If you've got any other brand and you're looking for a medium class subwoofer to use for DJing, house parties, for a band, anything like that, this is definitely going to be one of those videos you're going to want to watch. Now, here today, We've got it, it's all set up. We've got a couple of new setups going on. We're gonna run through that, so this way you can take a look, see at all the new equipment that we've changed around to try and make this a little bit better for everybody to hear. So what we've done is we've added a new MPM 3000 microphone. So we've added a condenser studio microphone to the lineup. This way to catch more of the ambient sound around the room. And we've also added some extra lighting, so this way everybody can see exactly what's going on. We've also added a second camera to be recording at the same time and we're going to take some different shots and see this unit from around the front the back and get a good detail of what's going on at the same time i am wearing a lapel microphone yes i am that's why you hear everything that i'm doing right now so at this point i'll turn off my body pack so this way you get an idea of what i sound like without it on and we're going to give this a try first and then we'll bring the top in. try and figure out the best way to get this to translate over on the camera I'll be honest it's not always the easiest thing which is why we've come up with a combination of different microphones to try and reproduce the sound at the end of the day it's pretty awesome you're gonna have to trust me on that uh, if you're DJing for 150 people or so and you've got two of these subs and you've got let's say two TS 315s on top or TS 312s on top you're gonna do really really well uh, if you're using other brands like uh, Mackie Thumps or the uh, Electro Voice ZLX, this is also a good sub to go with those as well. They're in the same class of products. Uh, PB also has one that uh, comes to mind. 
um, dark matter that's another one you can combine the, all these speakers together they work out really good together so what we'll do is take a closer look at the actual product on the back side and uh, we'll see what we can find there when it comes to buttons and knobs and plugs all right so now that we're looking at the back of the unit we've got ourselves a full plate here now the unit is made out of wood and it has been uh, treated so this way it's now completely coated in black it's pretty durable uh, i'd recommend getting a jacket for it so you don't scratch it up because you probably would uh based on how it's manufactured uh it could have been made out of something tougher probably they could have sprayed it with uh with a rhino liner or something like that uh but that's not here nor there that doesn't affect the sound quality and that's really what we're going to talk about today so to make this work of course we've got the nameplate we've got the model number we've got the power 1250 15 inch powered subwoofer all the fine print going through everything all the safety stickers including serial number then on this side this is the business side of what's happening here we've got uh, things we expect to see so we've got the option to turn the polarity we can reverse it just through here then we've got the output can either be a full range or we can have it crossover so that's what's going on here. If we're using, let's say we're using it for house party. So we're, we're using it in our rec room in our garage for a band or anything like that. We're not going to really crank the volume out of it, but we do want to get that low frequency. I think of this is like a bass boost. It just extends that low frequency, brings it in a little bit more pronounced. Uh, instead of crossing at uh, 400 hertz, uh, it gets going at about 600 and it really drives up the volume a little bit. Gives you that extra little punch. Then from there, we've got our actual volume gain knob. So 0 dB, 12 o'clock, negative, positive 10 dB, all here. Normally you start there and you adjust it. It'll depend on the type of music you play. Uh, the stuff we demoed was pretty solid, so I left it at 12 o'clock and it did its job really well. Uh, so you're going to have to vary that depending on the type of music you play. And this is going to adjust the volume level against that. So when it's getting a good signal, this light will turn green. When it goes into the red, which it will, or ambery red, then you know you're pushing the limit. So flickering on the limiter is okay. Having a green light here is great. I don't have a problem with that one bit, but you know, when it gets up there and it's solid, you'll hear it. It'll have that distorted, rattly, loose sound. It's like squealing your tires all the time. If you're constantly doing that, you're just gonna prematurely wear out the speaker and you'll have to replace the driver. Drivers like a tire in a car. If you have the subwoofer and you have for five years, you'll probably replace the driver on it just for good maintenance on the actual system if you wanna maintain a good sounding bass out of a subwoofer. That can go for any of the brands, by the way, not just this one. So here we've got our input plug. We've got two inputs. So if I plan on running my tops off of here, I can come off of here. If, let's say I have to hook up my second sub, I don't have a choice, they're side by side, and I don't want to run extra cabling, I can plug in the one unit, come straight out of this unit into the next. Or again, this could be my tops, your choice. That's why you have the option to cross over the unit. So this way I can cross it over, take the bass out of my tops, get more volume out of everything that way. And it just sounds like you don't just have a bassier system, but a louder system at the same time. Power switch located here. Uh, ours is set up for 110 to 20, sorry, 110. Uh, the machine also comes in a 220 configuration. You'll notice that difference depending if you're in Europe or in North America. Outside of that, there's not a whole heck of a lot more to talk about on the back. That's the idea of keeping this guy really affordable. If we put too much complicated electronics here, that's just gonna drive up the price because the box is the box. A good driver is a good driver. The only thing that's really gonna change the price point is that amp plate. Does it have enough power? For now, if you actually have the new TS3 series uh, and you have two tops, 15s, let's say, you're gonna probably need two subwoofers to keep up with it, uh, one for each top. If you have the original or the previous model, the TS2 series tops, so you have the TS215, 212 for the tops, then you can probably start off with one subwoofer, see how that does for you and move on from there. Okay, so we've got it all taken apart. I've took the cover off of it. I want to see what was going on behind there. I'll be honest, I've never actually taken the cover off before. Never really had a reason to. But I figured since I had a new camera and I had the sled and I had all that, and I thought we'd get a really cool shot of the speaker doing its job. Uh, and it was a pretty cool picture. Now, things that I like about, let's say, the JBL that I reviewed was the fact that it was made out of cardboard which is very important because that's really where we're going to get some really nice low frequencies that carry really well into a space. Uh, also, I don't want to see 
an actual rubber gasket. Works really good for car audio. That's not really what you want to get to carry sound in a large space, especially once the driver size gets larger and larger because you need stability on that actual driver. Uh, and to just have a rubber or sponge gasket around the outside, you're going to get a lot of fluttering back and forth. And that's not really good for the core. Uh, and you'll eventually end up burning out your actual coil. So this is the way you want to see it. Now, they've actually gone one step further here. And I don't know if it's based on the type of material, the fabric they used, but it's a it's a it's a hybrid type material we've seen it before where it's basically almost like a a, a threaded pattern uh, material where they coat it with a spray to give it more durability but it allows it to be very rigid and keeping the driver exactly where it has to be but give it maximum flexibility so this way it can do its job pushing out and pushing in that sort of thing so that's really nice and again uh, it doesn't have to look funky or fancy. It doesn't have to have a big branding on it. That's not what counts here. And you're not going to see it a lot when they're behind a really nice cover. Uh, you're going to just see a really good quality subwoofer. And that's pretty much what we're seeing here. Uh, it's got two ports on top, which are deep. They go three quarters of the way into the box, allowing the box to really generate a lot of pressure. And then this can pump it out. Again, the more air we're pushing, the more bass we're going to generate and we're, the more sound waves we're going to push across the room. And that's really what it is. It's all about volume when it comes to subwoofers in this size, 15, 18 inch, having them set up in line race, that sort of thing. It's all about size, momentum, getting the air moving in the space. So we'll say it's a very good thing. I'm going to say it's a good thing. It is a good thing. There you go. So outside of that, comes down to the price point. They build a solid box, again, which is one of the reasons why it's so popular. Price point is the first reason why people look at it. And then the reason why people buy it is because in its price point, it's probably doing the best job out there. Uh, it's an easy machine to carry. The handles are put well into the box. The box is double walled. So this way it has something solid to bite into. Uh, it's made between uh, a finished uh, MDF or my, my, my fault. Sorry, if I get it wrong, it's MDF and plywood on the inside. So add those two together, you end up with a very solid product. Uh, rubber feet on the bottom. If you plan on moving around a lot on carpets, you might want to put it down on pucks like I do. And uh, again, it's got a really good look to it. So I can't see why you wouldn't buy it for sound or design. Now, you also have to put this against how you're going to use it. So are you the right guy, the right girl, the right person for this unit? Now, if you're using it for small bands where you're playing for yourselves or you're playing for up to 150 people, uh, if you're at 150 people, you're going to want two of these. If you're in, you know, doing small pubs and bars and you just need a little extra for a three piece band or something like that, that's not bad. You can get away with one of these. Uh, if you're more than 150 in, you're going to have to change into a different sub altogether. But if half of your business is 150 people or less, uh, then that's probably a pretty good way to go. Uh, DJs, again, two of them if you're using, uh, if you're using the ZLXs, uh, Mackies, or definitely the Alto TS315s on top of this, you're going to want to have two of these subs underneath uh, if you're going to do up to 150 people. Again, you score that against how many times you do 150 people versus how many times you do 250 people. You're better off to rent for the oddball occasion and have these for, you know, the majority of your work. That's a pretty good way to go. Uh, outside of that, I mean, if you got any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll try and reply back to them as, uh, as soon as I can. It gets a little harder as time goes on. Um, but uh, we'll have links for this and all the other products you saw, including this, by the way. So if you're looking for a fun top just to play around with, uh, it's not a line array. This is actually the Trooper from Alto. Uh, it has Bluetooth on it. It has all kinds of crazy, funky features to it. Uh, it's only a couple hundred bucks in the States, like 260 in Canada and, you know, different prices depending on where you live. But great little investment if you need some just little small little tops. Anyways, that enough for that. Uh, but yeah, the sub, definitely we go through a lot of them here. People like buying them. They're easy. They're comfortable. If you don't want to pick up a big 100 pound subwoofer, definitely get these guys. They're half the weight, easy enough to cart around. Uh, I can't say enough about it.
Well, anyways, that's enough for this one. If you want to learn about any more about this subwoofer or any other products, we'll have the details, the descriptions, the links all down below. By now, there's definitely a palm tree on the screen telling you to please subscribe if you haven't. We need subscribers. That's how we know we're heading in the right direction. Uh, if you're looking for some other videos, have a look at our channel. We've got all kinds of videos for all kinds of products you see around us. See you next time.